I'm here with Sean McKenna, who is the lead uh, program manager for Azure Kubernetes Services. Mm -hmm. um, welcome. Thank you for, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to, to be here. Um, I guess the first question is probably, hey, can you explain what containers even are? Like, why are we doing containers? Yep. Um, yeah, so there's a few different benefits to containers. Um, a lot of what we see is around the portability, right, so that I can take my application and all of the associated runtimes and frameworks and whatever is required to run that application. Yep. And rather than traditionally where I had that split where some of it was pre-deployed yes. onto the virtual machine and the application came um, and you had a lot of these kind of works on my machine problems as a result because the, the yep. in, environment in production was different from what it was in, in the developer's laptop. Totally. Now I can package all of that into a single image and it runs the same everywhere. Yep. Um, so that's a big benefit. An associated benefit is I can now pack a bunch of those applications together onto a single VM, which yep. gives me higher utilization. Um, oh, yeah, and because I can, I can have you know, multiple applications, yeah. whereas previously I might isolate them by VM because I was worried about those dependencies of different runtime versions yep. and, and frameworks and so on. Um, and so enabling me to, to run multiple side by side uh, really yeah, gives yeah. You, you higher utilization. Um, and then I guess the other thing is from an operational perspective, now, despite the fact that I might be running very heterogeneous workloads, I might have some .NET, some Java, some Node, sure. some batch jobs, I'm still able to manage that through a common interface. So as somebody that's operating that environment, I don't have to say I only support .NET and Java yep. because I don't know how to manage those other things. Now, as an operator, I can just learn how do I manage containers, yeah, yeah. right? How do I manage and scale and deploy containers? Um, and actually, what's running inside, I don't really care because I've got this nice encapsulation mm -hmm. um, from the container. And there's also, because I'm a developer by, by background, and there's always this point of IT pro people have to save developers from doing something silly on it, right? Yep. And I guess, I don't know if it goes away, but that certainly becomes easier, right? Yeah, and so that's, that's part of the benefit is to you've had this constant tension between developers and IT mm -hmm. where developers want to move faster, they want to use the latest and greatest technology, there's some new hot framework that they want to go deploy, yep. um, and they haven't been able to do that because IT says, I only know how to manage these things, and hey, I'm the one that has to be on the hook for when something breaks, exactly. and so you're going to follow these rules. Yeah. And so part of the value of containers is it's sort of shifting that responsibility a little bit, and now the operator says, okay, I, I will deploy and manage the containers, you figure out what to, to run in inside and it's sort of up to you to make sure that the part that runs inside works and, and so that unblocks development teams to be able to choose different frameworks and, and, and pick the right tool for the job. And do the fun stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So obviously that's containers. Yep. And you're the PM for Azure Kubernetes services. So where does Kubernetes fit in those? Yeah, so if you imagine you have this container now um, and that has an application in it or part of an application, mm -hmm. um, now I need to run that in production at scale, right? Yep. I need to have probably multiple versions to handle the load behind a load balancer. Yep. I might have different containers that need to work together to deliver right. some larger application, right? We see a lot of affinity between containers and like a microservice uh -huh. kind of architecture where I've got different pieces of the app that are working together yep, to sure. deliver some business goal. Um, and so you need something to manage all of those things across a set of machines to, to manage deployment right. of three copies of that container across a set of machines, find where there's capacity to run them, yeah. deal with one of those machines going down all of a sudden and having need to, to reschedule those containers somewhere else, periodically checking their health. Uh -huh. um, if you have a new version of the container, rolling it out in a fashion that maintains availability of the application. So sort of that next level on top of containers is what mm -hmm. we talk about as container orchestration. Um, yep. and, and Kubernetes is sort of the de facto standard in the industry for container orchestration. Yep. Um, so it's a community so, project that's, that's worked on by effectively every company in the industry at this oh, point right. has, has some um, involvement in the project. Um, and so the Azure Kubernetes service is us taking that open source community project and running it as a managed service on Azure. What's the feature of, I mean, Kubernetes obviously is, is huge, right? Yeah. The AKS service in itself. What is one of the features or, or, or things in it that kind of gets you really sort of, yes, this is awesome. Yeah. So yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few different areas that we're focused on in our Kubernetes investments. Uh -huh. There's a lot around developer productivity and sort of enterprise grade Kubernetes. Um, but probably the thing that's gotten people the most excited yeah. is uh, what we're calling AKS virtual nodes. Okay. Um, and so the idea here is we have a peer service to, to AKS, which is called Azure Container Instances. Okay. And the yeah. idea behind ACI is to provide containers as a first-class infrastructure primitive in mm -hmm. Azure. So 
Previously, if you wanted to run a container, you had to go deploy a VM first, and then you run the container right. inside the VM. You have the VM in your subscription, and then you're running the container in there. Gotcha. ACI leverages what we talked about previously, which is the container has everything that's required okay. to actually run the application. So I ought to be able to take a container, throw it at Azure, and have it run without me doing any pre-provisioning of VMs, pre-configuration, right. that sort of thing. So that's the idea behind ACI. Yeah. Um, ACI doesn't have any orchestration capabilities built no. into it. So all the things that I just mentioned in terms of what a container orchestrator does, ACI doesn't have. It's just a, a core building block similar to a, a VM. Gotcha. Um, and so what we're doing with virtual nodes is effectively extending Kubernetes to enable deployment of containers into ACI as sort of the runtime environment. Right. So I can still interact with the Kubernetes control plane, yep. do a deployment, with the standard Kubernetes manifest, Kubernetes API, but actually have those containers rather than, or in addition to running on VMs in the cluster, mm -hmm. be able to run in this sort of what we're calling serverless container yes. kind of model where I don't see any VMs, I just see my containers. I pay for what I requested in terms of resources, pay yes. by the second, um, but everything is consistent from a Kubernetes perspective. So I'm not having to use some Azure special fork of Kubernetes. It's still a conformant <laughs> yeah. Kubernetes API surface. Uh -huh. um, it just has this virtual node that plugs into the Kubernetes control plane and looks effectively like another machine in the cluster, just yeah. one that has infinite capacity because right. we yeah. run it as a as a managed service for you. Yeah, and it's like a first class citizen on the on the whole platform. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so at at a Cloud Guru, we have already got some uh, container courses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's especially one on Kubernetes that is. Wildly popular, I would say it's really, really popular. Yep. Um, but what, in terms of resources, have you guys got? Where do we do? Where do I go and learn more about ACI or AKS or Kubernetes in itself or anything? Yep. Um, so the primary place I would point people is to just our, our uh, public documentation on docs.microsoft.com, and you can find ACI docs linked off of there as yep. well. Yep. Um, we've been doing a lot of investment there around not just kind of the basics of how to deploy Kubernetes and how to deploy an mm -hmm. application on top of it, but a lot of best practices content as well, which is something that customers have been asking for, yeah, is course. sort of like, hey, I get the, the basic hello world kind of thing, <laughs> but how do I take it to the next level, yes. right? Because there's so many different knobs that I can configure and different approaches that I can take uh, to, to actually running these large workloads in production. Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the best practices around doing that and what are the trade-offs, right? Because in a lot of cases, it's not a black and white answer. It, no, it, it's, it depends on you know, the way that your organization is configured in some cases, right? And so um, you'll see pretty rich documentation there around security and resource usage and, and mm -hmm. isolation and networking and how to configure your network. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of really great content there. Uh, uh, to, to get people up to speed, like I said, beyond just the kind of basics yes. of getting going, but yep. to now, okay, have a sense of how I would actually do this for yeah. real. Yeah, no, infrastructure advice and, and guides is always a key in these sort of larger scenarios, definitely, yeah. yeah. Well, I don't have any other questions, really, so okay, thanks. <laughs> thanks for everything. I know. You know all um, you need to know about Kubernetes now. Yes, I'm just going to go. and <laughs> No, thanks a lot, Sean. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks yeah, for your time.